I teach well of worship fellowship. I teach is in truth and in spirit, well of worship. We get that from John chapter 4, verse 24, which says, the time is coming and the time is now when those who worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. So that's where, that's where we get it is from. Uh, so those of you looking for God with hands, with the feet, and a beautiful face, that's not the only worship here. Yeah, you know, today is Monday. Monday is question and response. Uh, so now we do attempt questions from life, uh, from society, marriage, uh, love, from the Bible, faith, religion, prophecy, you name it. If you have a question, you can always send it to us. And then we shall attempt. Of course, we shall attempt by recording an audio and sharing it with you. We do this every Monday between 6 to 8 p.m. East African time via Zoom. If you can join in, it would be nice to have more people on this Zoom. Yeah, so today we have a question from the usual suspect, who is Peter. And then later on, we'll be attempting a question from my brother, Colin Zodero. And the question is coming directly from yesterday's someone, so it's for Isaiah. At least I understand. So, Peter, do you want to shoot your question? Yes, I have two questions. Uh, the first question. Um, what does it mean uh, to make money and maintain having it <laughs> uh what uh, how how is that possible how achievable is that um uh, because make money and keep it and maintain it and man maintain and maintain the state of possessing it uh how come uh somebody can be thought to be f financially prosperous for the for five years and then the next five years is no more for 20 years and the next uh, th 10 years after the 20 is no more how is it possible that somebody has been working for 30 years and after 30 years he or she can uh, he, the, the the bank has to sequesterate. <laughs> that's the word. The bank has to 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 uh, you know to yeah sequesterate. I'm I'm looking for another word. I failed to get it, but that's the English word to sequesterate his or her property uh, without having the ability to redeem themselves. Yet they have been working for thirty years, earning big in a big position. So what does it mean to make money and maintain possessing it and maintain the state of possessing it? Uh, that's my first question. My second question is about worldviews and evangelism. Christianity is a world view. Uh, where world mean where world means birthed out of culture, birthed out of a specific people's culture. Now Christianity coexists with other world views. Uh, when we argue about the truth and we argue that Christianity is truth or the truth uh, or is where the truth is and the rest of the world views are not. Or when we say maybe naturalism is, but, but evolution is not. Maybe evolution is, but, but Hinduism is not and so on. What is the objective standard of truth and how certain must where do we find the certainty that this worldview, which is not a heavenly view, uh, or which is not, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I mean, how do we 
how, how sure are we that we are the objective truth and the rest are not? Or they are the objective truth and we are not? Because By who you mean Christianity, Christians? Hello. So, uh, hello. Yes, I'm sorry. Somebody interrupted uh, when I was still asking. I'm, I'm asking uh, the word views and truth establishable. How tr how is truth establishable? Because uh, for the uh, for, for most of the time that we've we've been debating world views, Christianity versus others, or others versus Christianity, there is a way we pose or other world views pose as to be the truth. And it, be, it, it becomes a battle of logic. He or she who wins logically becomes a plausible worldview for us to adopt or adapt to. While others who seem or sound weak logically then are abandoned. Is, is, is this truth of the worldviews subject to logic and he or she who becomes more plausible logically takes the day. So, so I'm, 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 I'm within that circle because when I'm evangelizing, aren't I selling my worldview, AKA Christianity? And if they also are also in the business of evangelizing in inverted commas, aren't they in the business of selling their worldviews, which are culturally, birthed why for we've never seen or we've never heard god objectively stand and speak about which worldview is the standard truth so that that becomes the standard peter your question specifically is i'm, I'm struggling to get the real question how do we determine truth from the different worldviews how how do you establish truth? What, 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 is the what is the basis of saying this is and the rest are not? Yet all of them are birthed within culture, human cultures. Unless we have a divine culture, but we've never God speak or see him or her objectively speak for everyone to hear. It is humans who reach out to other humans according to their cultural interpretations of what they have perceived as a divine being. So, what is the standard, the parameter of truth when all our arguments about gods and God are culturally birthed. Okay, I think I think I got the question. I hope the others have also been following. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Peter. Uh, your first question concerning money and keeping it and maintaining it, like you called it, which Francis was here. Hmm? I wish my brother Francis was here. That's his specialty. He would have given us a load down on how, how we do this. So I'm going to pack it for now. I want us to start with the second question about truth. What is the basis of saying this worldview is true and the other one is wrong? When all worldviews are culturally birthed, that was your question, at least as I got it. It's a quite a philosophical question. I, I want to start with Kato, I know Kato likes, uh, likes philosophical questions like this one. Kato, do you want to attempt this? How do you establish truth knowing that all worldviews are culturally birthed, including science itself, if I may? Uh, that, uh, that's interesting. Uh, let me come uh, Let me come in, uh, in a few. Eh? Um, I'm not somewhere where I can talk. Yeah, I know you'd enjoy. I knew you'd enjoy this question. Okay, who else can take a stab at this? Yeah, 
Yeah, that's your own question. Why is it on your microphone? <laughs> but then in double is the same. Okay. Yeah, then the comment. Who has to attempt Peter's question? It's quite philosophical, so it might not be for everybody. <laughs> what are those parameters of establishing truth? Or oh, at least dismissing or accepting some worldviews as opposed to others. My brother Nicholas, can you talk? He can obviously he can't talk. Or at least I assume he can't. Uh, Tom, can you talk? I know you're a Christian. How did you dismiss all other worldviews, for example, and, and adopt Christianity? If if he has ever studied or read any of them, other than Christianity anyway. Yeah. And also that begs the question, we need to study all worldviews so that we can accept or dismiss them. I think I could also add that that question to your your, your questions, Peter. Okay, nobody is taking this up. Clearly, Abby is driving until we talk about men and women and sex, then she'll come. Uh, I Priestizer, can you talk now? Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello, everyone. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, for, uh, first of all, I would like to share a simple definition of, of what a worldview is for for all of us to uh to share uh the the the, the term worldview is uh is a combination of two words the the, the first is the world then uh the the other is uh, is the view. So from the combination of two words, you can tell. Uh, I mean, there is a starting point for you to understand what a worldview is. It is uh, it is how you see the world. So that is the worldview. In essence, a worldview is. Uh, uh how a person looks at the world how they understand the world works around them uh and uh, that world view is normally born or formed from one's culture and culture might even include religion and other anthropological factors and also it is formed from one's philosophy and uh, that worldview also can be formed of what i call uh experience so one's experiences will influence their their worldview so that is what a worldview is. I wanted moderator. I wanted to to start with that so that uh, the, the members in here uh, who have never even heard about the term get to understand what we mean when we say a worldview in in simpler terms. And and I also wanted to mention that because they are they are learned fellows here, men and women. Uh, who would like to always mm -hmm. compare with the notes and then get to understand what we mean? So I just I just wanted to give that brief uh, definition of a worldview. But in case we have time, then we can extend that discussion. It is a very interesting discussion in getting to understand what a worldview is and how worldviews work for that matter. Now that I have uh, assigned myself a responsibility that you did not assign to me, I would like you now to give me the assignment. What is the question, Mr. Chairman? Again. <laughs> what are the parameters of establishing yes. truth? 
Hello? Okay, Peter, you want to? Yeah? <laughs> what, uh, what is the basis of of considering one as truth and the rest untruths? Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, if that is the question, uh, one, of course, the question has been asked many times and the person has been repeating himself many times and some parts of the questions we have lost and uh, perhaps we have even adopted other parts of the question. But there's another part of the question that the brother mentioned earlier when I was listening in. And uh, he said that uh, since world views are also born out of cultures, did I hear, did I hear him right? Yes, he said that. Then why yeah. would why would one culture assume that its worldview is correct and uh, other cultures' worldviews are, are incorrect? And then he also mentioned the the idea of Christianity as as a worldview, and he seemed in his explanation to to bias a Christianity to to a particular culture. I would like to fetch from him again to understand uh, to which culture does he attribute Christianity to, if he doesn't mind to respond to that. Uh, hello? Please continue. Yes, the, the term culture here, before it is attributed to a certain people, refers to every human originated thing, thought, and practice. Every so, human so, originated. So, so, so in this context, what is, what is human originated in Christianity? Uh, it, uh, for example, it is a human being who started it. The human being started it in a certain, in a certain and, tribe. And who is that human being? Jesus of Nazareth. And, and that human being uh, had that background in his tribal, uh, a tribal uh, background and religious background and, and a traditional background uh, and so on among a certain people culturally. And then he birthed what today we call uh, Christianity, now which we is have, human. We, we, thank you. We have issues here. Uh, we have many, many issues, and I doubt we will handle all those, all of those issues. But oh, uh, oh, okay, okay. For now, for now, let me say this. Uh, let me just go straight to the answer because we will confuse many people who are following here. Uh, because Peter being Peter, his brain is, is fireworks, so it is always loaded with many things. But for those who are listening in and those who are attending on this call, I would like you to understand that uh, the basis of a worldview is, uh, is in testing its philosophy, testing its logic, and testing its relationship to reality, and its ability to responding to existing real questions. That is how we, we evaluate a worldview. Say that again. <laughs> the, the basis of uh, how we come to a conclusion that this, this worldview is relevant or the other is relevant, we normally don't say that this worldview is correct, the other one is wrong. No, it is wrong to, to, to say that way. Why? Because every worldview contributes to a particular reality. So the standard, first of all, is reality. Now, we test the philosophy of a worldview. We test the logic of a worldview. We test its coherence and correspondence to reality. And we test its ability 
to respond to existing questions of reality. Those are the, the four the four elements of the world view. Okay. Yeah, so I think I've I've responded to the question because he was he was inquiring of the basis. Now that is the basis. So every world oh, okay. view, uh, those are the problem. Every world view must be subjected to to those four areas, and uh, you subscribe to a particular world view based on how it has participated in those uh, in those in those areas. That is how you subscribe to it or unsubscribe to it if need be. Thank you, thank you, moderator. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter, are you there? And 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 all those and those and, and then all responses to those parameters are also culturally positioned. Or they rely on the 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 the, the interpreters or discussants intellectual muscle ability and information which vary from person to person so how is objectivity achieved in that case and who has that authority to dismiss one and uphold the other well knowing that the discussants participating in this discourse or in those discourses are, have various intellectual abilities exposures you know, and, and information. Is that all? I guess he has muted. I guess that's yeah, I think all. That's yeah, sure. Uh, it, it looks like Peter uh, has uh, negated culture and uh, according to him in context culture is already problematic is that what peter says that culture is already problematic therefore it shouldn't be utilized anyway anyhow uh -huh. a claim number one yes culture is problematic Claim yes. two, claim two, therefore, whosoever argues from that can never claim objectivity of truth because he or she argues from a human originated thing, thought, or practice. Now, what is original with, uh, with human? Serubide, do not mute. You are wasting a lot of our time. <laughs> this time he has He's both. talking to his boss. Oh. Now, now we are, we are finished. Okay, just, just proceed. Yeah. I, I assume the answer is no to that question. <laughs> you are representing him. I am back. I am back. But are you back? Has your boss left? Uh, here I am. I am back, full in full swing. <laughs> yeah. What is what is original with with human? Original with human. I, I didn't get that question because I said human originated. So what do you mean by human originated? Created, nurtured by humans. Okay. Now, uh... meaning artificial, artificial. Is there anything objective? It's okay, we understood. Is there anything, is there anything or objective about language? Yes, there is. Is language human originated? No, languages are. Language is not, but languages are. 
Okay, so is there anything original about languages? I'm still thinking, I'm still thinking, I'm still thinking. Moderator, we are waiting for the thinker. Yeah, we we can't wait for the thinker. What if he thinks for the whole day? <laughs> what can we do? Because he keeps interrupting. We thought that we had responded to the question. He came back with arguments. He should tell us whether there's anything objective about languages. Because what he wants to demonstrate here is that a worldview should be exercised in a vacuum. That is his core argument. I don't know whether he has already seen it or not. But his core argument is like the worldview to be objective, it must be born out of a vacuum. In other yeah, words, yes. In other words, uh, the term worldview, you must dismiss world. And then you have a view, and therefore it is objective. Why? Because if you go to the hospital and they take samples of your blood and laboratory one, two, three, four, five come up with the same test results of your blood sample. Mr. Serubide argues that we should ask another shrink somewhere to see their view on, on the test of that blood. Why? Because we, the laboratories there are human originated. They are for relative. It, you, it can't be objective that you are HIV positive. Why? Because the laboratories that tested you are human originated. Is anyone following? Mm, I'm following. So that is why I want that's, that's why I wanted the brother to work within his field and tell us if there is any objectivity in languages. He's still thinking. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, follow, I'm following that scientific example. I'm following very well. You are you 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 you, you should you should be follow, you should be thinking about language. The science will confuse you. Let us go to language, Mr. Serubide. Is there an objectivity in languages? Mm, mm, mm. It, it could, it could, you know, huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm now getting stuck here. And you are all come on Monday Zoom. Getting stuck here because... Yeah. Because you like, do, do, do you know why you're getting stuck? Mm. You are being served of your own poison. You like getting us stuck. Wrong. Because, Mr. Because... Serubin, objectively, mm. you, you are saying that as far as humanity is concerned, objectivity is impossible. I would argue philosophically that what might be impossible is absolutism, but not objectivity. Mm, mm. Because, but the four parameters that I gave you are parameters of each and every objectivity, wherever it is examined. And I wish you had dwelt on those four parameters and we discussed them. And you see how we come to conclude and establish objectivity. This thing is objective. Why? Because we have gone one, two, three, four areas. You would challenge a world mm. view that claims absolutism. Mm, mm, you would challenge mm. that. Because for, I, I subscribe to the Christia, Christianity worldview. And the Christianity that I subscribe to is not one of Jesus of Nazareth. Because Jesus of Nazareth never, never started Christianity. Like you earlier claimed. Mm? Uh-huh. Because what we have in the Bible, we have the Jesus of Nazareth and we have the Jesus of faith. 
the Jesus of Nazareth is a philanthropist, is a miracle worker, is a magician. He's a rabbi. The pop star. <laughs> that is the Jesus of Nazareth. There is nothing cre cre Christian about the Jesus of Nazareth. There is nothing Christian about the miracles he's performing. There, there is nothing, totally nothing about that. However, there is something Christian and Christianity about his teachings we have now started. So, 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 how you come up with the idea that Christianity is human originated by Jesus of Nazareth? That, of course, I, I, I love and like the Jesus of Nazareth. But that Jesus of Nazareth has 12 disciples. One of them commits suicide. 11 stays. They replace the number. They become 12 again. And there is no Christianity. At least if you've, been, if you've been reading the book of Acts, you will see that there is no Christianity. And then there is this man known as Paul, who is not looking at the miracles. When you read at the episodes of, of Paul, he's not talking about the miracles. But when you read the those who report about the Jesus of Nazareth, the autobiographies, they are reporting miracles. Now, somewhere, somehow, Paul introduces another Jesus, and that is what we call the Jesus of faith. Now, it is through the introduction of that Jesus of faith that the worldview known as Christianity is born. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Now, another worldview is born, known as Christianity. Now, this worldview is not born by it is not human originated it is a philosophy that asks questions questions like the four questions we have always asked here that qualify a world view i talked about parameters now i'm talking about the four questions of the world view question number one a question on origin question number two a question of problem question number three a question of solution question number four a question of destiny Now, these are the structures, the framework that, that make a worldview. You have a worldview, yes, but how does it respond to the question of origin, the question of the problem, the question of the solution, the question of destiny? How does it? Then you ask the question, how, how do we know? How do we test? How do we, conf how do we even come to the idea or to the stage of subscribing to a worldview? Then I gave you the four parameters, how we come to that. But it's also important to understand that there are these four questions. Now, when you read the New Testament, especially the episodes of this guy known as Paul, in relation to the autobiographies of, of, of some of the disciples of the Jesus of Nazareth, okay? Now, you start now forming now what we call a worldview. So you, you, you now challenge Christianity. To what origin does Christianity attribute the origin of everything? Christianity says there is a creator. Every worldview agrees that there is origin. Every worldview regardless of the culture or the people. Somewhere, somehow, things originated. When you ask the evolution, they will tell you Big Bang, ETC. When you ask other cultures, they will tell you ancestors. You know, the, the question of origin is universal. Now, Again, another question, the question of the problem. If you ask the entire world, is there a problem? They will all agree there is a problem. Now, how they interpret and define that problem is where the varying worldviews come in, and that's where we need to test. For instance, 
there's a world view I like using this young brother of mine, Mugoya, and I, I know he won't take it personally. The, 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 the world view from which Mugoya comes from, they argue that the problem of this world is morality. If you fix the morals of people, you have fixed the problem of the world. You can ask politicians, they will tell you the problem of the world. Ask other religious people, they will tell you the problem of the world. Ask scientists, they will tell you the problem of the world. Ask Christians, they will also tell you the problem of the world. Now, bring all those problems that you've been told and start judging them using the four. Parameters that I that, that I discussed earlier. Then at that point, you will come now to what is objective in all this. So that's why I told you that every world you must be tested every time, every time. The Bible says, I think it is in First John chapter 4, verse 1. Do not believe each and every spirit, but test the spirits. Uh. Mm -hmm. I think it is in Peter 3.15. I don't know if it is the first Peter or second Peter, where it says that we must test and prove every position and we must be prepared already to give a response to whoever asks us the reason of our faith. So every world view must be put to test. This is why we, we always uh, expose our Christianity world view to challenges, we record what our claims, we invite people to come here and we debate our worldview, where we fail to defend it, okay? And we are proven wrong. We adopt to the new revelation, where we are not challenged as wrong. That serves as existing revelation and objectivity until you proven wrong. This is why we keep fellowshipping, because we keep fellowshipping because we want to grow. Why? Because our worldview is not absolute. It is just objective. And whoever claims to have an objective worldview should expose it to scrutiny. This is why Christianity does not have doctrines and dogmas. It doesn't have. Why? Because it is a progressive worldview. But working within the parameters of existing reality, which is common to, to all to all people, believers and non-believers, members and non-members. You must have that common thing that you are all hunting for and seeking to understand. Moderate, I don't know whether I have not complicated matters further. No, I think I think you are quite clear. I just wanted this young brother of mine to say something, but I think he has dropped off. Anyway, when you get a chance, I guess these questions keep coming back. So, yeah, I guess another time he'll get a chance. Peter, Peter, are you happy? Is the big side attracted? <laughs> ah, Peter, Peter, Peter is a Kavio man. Today has become another Kavio man. <laughs> this starts, then he runs away. Okay, let, let us go to the next question. It's a series of questions, actually. Now, this one is for you, Isaiah, again, because it's from yesterday's sermon uh, about God will see. Okay? I don't know if you have seen uh, Brother Collins Odero's questions on the group. Anyway, he says, my question Brings from yesterday's message, God will see. Mm. From that, three things were established. Number one, the God from verses one to eight is El, which is among the gods, and it is him who asked for the son's sacrifice. Okay? Mm. Mm. Number two, and the God picking the story from verse nine is another God who battles the first request, mm. but is not interested in human sacrifice, for he is the sacrifice. And then number three, Yahweh is the tra transitional God from El to the right God. Mm. He who causes chaos, calamities, and even kills people who disobey him. Mm. Here comes my question now. Mm. In the book of Hebrews, the writer ascribes Abraham's act of accepting to offer Isaac an act of faith. Mm. 
recounting that God was able to raise him from the dead. That is from Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. Okay? Reading this verse pulls God back into the Mount Moriah event, making him an interested party in what would have been the disastrous end of the Son of Promise. Help me get this clearly in light of yesterday's presentation. First of all, I would like to That's thank you. Yes, I would like mm -hmm. to thank uh, the brother to, uh, for listening in and uh, following up. Uh, these are the things that we are interested in because we want people to, to always listen and then um, ask questions, challenge our positions because this is how we grow. I am so blessed that someone out there listened to the someone because I'm very sure Collins was not part of the audience that I had there, but at least he followed up with that. So uh, we thank God. We thank God. Now, I am going to give Collins uh, a straight answer in the context of the sermon and the presentation that I made last Sunday. Uh, this is what I'm going to tell him. The, the, the God of Christianity is God number two, because he mentioned like three gods there. Did you, did you, did you notice? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So the God of Christianity is God number two. And the writer in Hebrew is trying to communicate God number two using how he was understood or misunderstood in the Old Testament. Hence the reference. Now, for those of you who are here who are representing Collins, does that make sense? Especially if you listen even to the sermon. <laughs> he was trying to represent that God. <laughs> He's trying. Uh, mm. The right of Hebrews is trying to communicate God number two. Isn't it? Because for mm. those of you who are not who did not listen to the sermon, please go, go and listen to it. You'll come up with many questions, I'm sure, like Collins has. Uh, but here is what I said briefly. One, People have to understand that uh, the the biblical patriarchs, patriarchs are the the uh, Abraham, Isaac, J Jacob. I think those are the the, the official patriarchs. Eh? Mm. So people need to understand that in the Bible, they are they are they are three stages of, of, of the Jewish religion. Okay? There is uh, the patriarchal stage, the religion of the patriarchs. Now, this, this stage of the patriarchs, they worshipped, a, 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 they, they had a polytheistic religion. They worshipped many gods. They had gods for almost everything, every problem and every, every solution. They had a god for that. The, the umbrella of their pantheon, okay, is in the Bible, is referred to as El or Elohim. But in that pantheon, they had uh, the supreme leader of that pantheon. And that the supreme leader of that pantheon was called Elion. So, so hence even the names, the biblical names, like Isaiah's, Ezekiel, uh, you know, the Isaiah and Ezekiel, are representative to different gods. But I'll come to the Isaiah part. Let me first concentrate myself to the El part. The El part communicates that, that Abraham worshipped that pantheon of gods. Abraham did not know the God that you know, or did not know God like you know him today. So, so that is very important for you to understand. So, so in the patriarchal region, they are gods. 
that took human sacrifice, especially children, and specifically sons, first sons. Now you have to understand that uh, the, the God of Abraham did not ask for Isaac. Uh, no, for Ishmael. Excuse me. The God of Abraham asked for, for Isaac. Why? Because Isaac was not even the first son to Abraham. No, he wasn't. Abraham had already sons and daughters. But you see, Isaac was the first son given to Abraham by the gods, by El. Mm. Uh -huh. so, so El, because you know he waited for over 100 years. In essence, in that couple, it was only Sarah who did not have a child. And Sarah was a worshiper of, of this, this God. Now, there is a God who involves himself and takes advantage of Abraham and claims that he's the one who has given a son to Abraham through, through, through Sarah. Now, after that, God has given a son to, to Abraham through Sarah. There is another God who wants that son as a burnt offering to burn, to take that son through fire, burn him for, for gods. Now, Abraham is in confusion. He takes up his son to go and offer that son to the gods or to God. Then while he's there and he's about to do that, okay, the Bible says, if you are following us in Genesis chapter 22, verse 9, it now changes language and says, now the angel of the Lord. Now that one is a different God from the from El that is mentioned in, in the first five verses, first eight verses, in fact. So for you to understand these things, your English Bible will not help you. But your Hebrew Bible will help you because it distinguishes the names. It says, and God told Abraham, take your son and offer. That is El. Then when it comes to verse 9, then the angel of the Lord, now that one is translated as Yahweh. El and Yahweh are not the same. Now, Abraham now switches from a God who takes human sacrifice to a God who doesn't take human sacrifice. However, he's a war God, he kills. He's a bloody God, bloodthirsty God. And he takes the blood of those who are not his worshippers. But Yahweh was also worshipped by Canaanites as a storm God. But now, there's a version of now of Abraham, the version of Yahweh that doesn't take child sacrifice. Because the way Abraham set off to take Isaac without question, it is clear that this was a known exercise and demand by gods. And we all know, even in African traditional religions, gods demanded for children or for human sacrifice. So these are the, are the, are the patriarchal gods and the god that Abraham worshipped. It is the same God that is presented in the creation account. There is uh, uh, verse 1, the L there. There is verse 26, L there. Then there is another God in verse 2. The God of that, uh, uh, of, of that confusion and void. But that I will teach another day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we were trying to demonstrate yesterday was this, that people need to understand how has this God we know today, how has he evolved over time and how does the Bible demonstrate that evolution? I call it evolution, but the actual word, the actual theological word is revelation. How has God revealed himself through generations now we know 
that Abraham has matured from human sacrifice to no human sacrifice. And now he's going to be a God who takes animals, but not human beings. Okay? Because you have to understand that Genesis is written while the Israelites are in exile. They are trying to distinguish their God from other surrounding gods. But that does not mean to say that the re Judaism did not copy and paste from surrounding cultures. It did. We have mentioned these things and we have even given examples. Like priesthood, like sacrificial system, like temple, like priest etc. But you see, there was that stage of the patriarchal region, patriarchal region. Then it shifted. Then it went into the, the when, 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 when they go into Canaan, Okay, they go into the land of Canaan. There's, there's another stage of religion that is going to grow. Okay, and that religion that is going to grow there is the religion of, uh, for, for, of Yahweh. Yahweh is going to take charge and is going to gradually, gradually extend this pantheon. This pantheon, for those of you who want to, to read about this pantheon, I can read your verse and you hear how the Jews wanted to distinguish their God from, from El now. Oh, Lord have mercy. I hope I find that verse. It is in Psalms chapter 82. Uh, Psalms 82. I am using my uh, software Bible. Psalms 82. Thank you. Monod, am I still on? Yes, you are on. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, oh, now... Psalms chapter 82, verse uh, 1, it says, God sits in the congregation of gods, and he judges among gods. <laughs> Has anyone ever read that? Sits in what? He sits in the congregation of gods. And he judges hey. among gods. If anyone Some has any other person can read. Some translations say in the league of gods. Uh -huh. So the Jews understood that uh, we are like, like the ancient Near East region had many gods, had pantheons of God. But the Jews are developing and working on monotheism. Now, now the Jews want to demonstrate that uh, Abraham was not sacrificed because another God interrupted the sacrifice. And we're going to introduce to you another God, a.k.a. Yahweh. Yahweh is introduced at that, at that mountain known as Moria. Yahweh is introduced now. However, Yahweh is not also the Christian God. Yahweh is, is the God of Judaism. He's a warmonger. He's the God that kills and takes for you from other people who are not his. Whoever wants to survive the sword of Yahweh has to convert to Yahwehism or has to be proselyted to become a Jew. And so they will survive the, the, the wrath of Yahweh. Now we know the Christian God is not a God who kills to save his people. But Yahweh is the God who kills to save his people. The Christian God that we preach today is a God who died to save his people. Now, the only close image to that God in, in the Old Testament that I know is in Exodus chapter 6, where he tells, uh, he tells Moses that, you see, I tried to reveal myself to your, to your grandfather, Abraham, but things did not go well. Because when I decided, he mistook me to be Yahweh. And from there, Yahwehism was launched. But I am not I am not El. I am not Yahweh. I am. Now, that is why the New Testament incarnate God uses like seven I am's. I am. I am. I am. Has anyone read that New Testament Jesus I am speech? Mm. Uh -huh. Because he wants to tell the world that he's the I am. 
So this is why I was responding to Brother uh, 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 Collins and, 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 and telling him that uh, among the three categories that he, he, he followed in, in that presentation, uh, God number two. The, the God picking the story from verse nine is another God who but was the first request for he is not interested in human sacrifice for he is the sacrifice. Now, that God who is the sacrifice himself is the Christian God that we preach. That is the Christian God that we preach. Now, he asked a question. Now, the question came. In the book of Hebrews, the writer ascribes Abraham's act of accepting to offer Isaac, an act of faith, uh -huh, recounting that God was able to raise him from the dead, Hebrews 11, 17. Now, the, the, the writer of Hebrews, gentlemen and ladies, is using the former revelation to, that is, that is what I call their misrepresentation or their primitive revelation and understanding of who God was. He's using that stage of revelation to demonstrate how God has always been struggling to reveal himself and, and the, the opposition that he has put up against the gods that he found with humanity. Because when human beings looked for God and failed in their fallenness, they created the gods. And the, the, the theology of Revelation teaches that God has always been struggling to reveal himself using existing instruments, existing philosophies, existing knowledge, existing experiences and experiments. God has always been trying to reveal who he is. In fact, I don't know what, what, what the English the English word God means, but even that is not his name. <laughs> it is just a rebo. So when we say God, we are talking about that so that supra intelligible non-caused being that is the cause of everything. That is what we are talking about. So, so I was warning people to stop saying that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. You don't know who was the God of Jacob and the God of Abraham. That one is not your God. That was just a stage of revelation. And we appreciate that stage of revelation because everything has to begin somewhere. But we shouldn't get, get stuck at that stage of revelation. We should worship God for who he is and not see him in these instruments and uh, and presentations of, uh, of fellow, for, fellow fallen human beings. I don't know whether that makes sense, moderator, but maybe Collins will come back and, uh, and guide us. I'm sure. I'm sure Collins will come back. Does anybody on this call have a question about his studies presentation? Maybe we can also attempt it before we move to the next one. Okay, I don't see any hands up, so I assume you have no questions or, or you haven't watched or listened. Please listen and get back to us with any follow-up questions. I can take another question right now. Um, does anybody in the call have a question? Uh, Mugoya, my brother, I'm sure you have a question. Well, uh, not at the moment. Not at the uh, moment? Maybe, yes. Not at the moment. Fair, fair enough. But what do people yeah. think? What do people think about what we've said so far and what we've shared? What do they think? Because that also is important. You might not have a question, but have a feeling, have a, have something that you've gathered. Mm. And then we get okay. to know. Mm. At least those who are on the call. Okay. Anybody? Reactions, additions, subtractions from, from what you've said so far? Hello? 
Thank you very much. Uh, from what everyone I think has listened uh, to here, it becomes clearly evident that studying the Bible needs the help of an able biblical theologian. It becomes glaringly unquestionable that you might re read it. And sometime, some time ago I said, uh, even reading, even reading it, especially reading English, you need an able teacher of English language and communication. But studying the Bible, it has become unquestionable here that we need or one needs an able biblical theologian. Otherwise, it is easy to misread and it is easier to misinterpret and claim <laughs> claim that you're on the truth. <laughs> so, so, so it is my humble appeal here that in, uh, in finance, there is what we call a retainer. Maybe Jethro can explain. A retainer is some, um, some kind of payment that keeps a professional person in service of your challenges when challenges arise. They might, it might not be monthly, it might not be weekly, but it, it is some kind of payment that one pays even when the trouble has not yet fallen. So I think it's high time we thought of retainers of, 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 of physicians, retainers of teachers, retainers for lawyers, retainers for theologians. For, the, for some of us who are interested in learning about God or gods, and some of us who think faith is important, especially if the Bible is the source. Otherwise, reading the Bible, everyone might be able to, even when that too is, a, is, is, a, is an uphill task. But reading the Bible, or rather studying the Bible without the help of an able biblical theologian, huh, you can make people fetch water and call it holy water of Jesus. <laughs> And kiss shoes. Okay. Yeah. Moderator, moderator, I wanted to say a few a few a few words on that. I don't know whether Tom wanted to moderator, talk. before Pastor comes, I want him to also respond to me. Yes. Uh, mine is about the language used when Pastor was responding to Peter's question. Uh, uh, he used the two words right and wrong. After when Peter was asking, he also used those words. My question is, can, can the world view be in its pages of instances? Uh, can the world view be a progressive revelation, a progressive discovery? Uh, because when you say right or wrong, uh, it's, like, it's like there is a conclusion at some stage. So, so can the world view be progressive and decide, or instead of using the word right or wrong, can we say this has been discovered, this has been learned? Does not necessarily have to be right or wrong? Thank you. Hmm? I'll start from there. I uh, Tom, the, the, I wanted to to <laughs> Tom, Tom is a different world eh? because there is where mm -hmm. Peter there is where Peter was. That's where I wanted to come in and uh, you start from Peter's world, then you come to Tom's. I I wanted to tell those listening in that uh, you must take some time and sit down and list 
what is important to you the the most important or, or the most essential yeah. uh, the most essential eh, in your life if faith is on that list eh, you by all means you have to take it seriously If you list the most essential things, for instance, your health on that, your job uh, on, on that list, uh, your family on that list, and then you have faith as one of the most essentials. Now, what we mean by most essentials is the things that uh, you can't live without. If faith is on that list, then you have to take your faith seriously, gentlemen and ladies. And by taking it serious, you need to do a study, do an investigation. Don't just park. Don't 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 just believe what it what a trained theologian say. Don't believe. Listen to them carefully. Then note down what they have said. Go take it to the world and test it and see what the world says about it because this is an essential it is not just life your life at stake it is your eternal life at stake so i think that is very important gentlemen so so you need trained theologians to help you yes but there's something else that you need that is also as powerful as having a trained theologian. Fellowship. Fellowship, where you exercise your ideas to the public and the public gives you their views. And then you, you relate with yours. You shake those positions. You see? I think it's very, very important to, to have that, that boldness, that openness, because I can see one of us here comes from uh, from a cult that has uh, has deemed us as as dangerous. But but even even if you are warned by your your religion that that place is dangerous, if there is somehow you can access that dangerous place, you go there and listen to them. Okay, you go secretly and listen to them. You can even go at night like Nicodemus. Judaism had warned its leaders about this man known as Jesus. And it was punishable for a leader of Judaism to be seen during the day having a conversation I want one conversation with this, this heretic known as Jesus of Nazareth. But there was a Nicodemus who smuggled himself at night and had a conversation with this guy. Why? Because his belief was essential. <laughs> so I don't care whether people have warned you against IT, or they have warned you against Catholicism, or they have warned you against Pentecostal, or they have warned you against SDA, or they have warned you against Islam. You, you go there. <laughs> go there and listen. And fetch what they have to offer. And then go back home and think about these things. Think about these things. Okay? Then there's another char character represented by the Beri Berian church people who came and listened to Paul and took notes, went back, deliberated about these issues, came back the next time with different questions. Why? Because they knew and thought that uh, their faith was unessential and they did not take their faith casually. They were serious about that. They were serious. So I, I, I kind of ask you, whoever is listening to me, take your faith serious. If you start a WhatsApp group about faith matters, take it seriously. Don't just play comedy there. Take it seriously. 
take your Bible study serious. Ask serious questions. <laughs> Challenge these positions. That is how you will grow and that is how you will enable the revelation of God to your life. I mean, the revelation of God must be assisted to be understood. God is revealing himself. And uh, the, the, the revelation for God to be revealed, it, it is exclusive for him. Only God can reveal himself. But to understand that revelation is our responsibility. And that is how we do our, we do our responsibility. So that we can understand this God that we're talking about. <laughs> Don't just run away. If a scientist says that there is no God, or an atheist says that there is no God, don't pray for them. <laughs> Before you pray for them and, and cast them as demon possessed, eh? Before you do that, you, you invite them. You go with them out on, on coffee, have a conversation. Have a conversation with them and, 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 and be... Be objective. Don't fight. You see? So, and then after you've understood what they're saying, then present to them your position as well. And watch how they punch holes into your position. You know? Things like that. So, Moreta, I thought that was that was important for us to, 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 to really underscore and cover. Mm. So, so, yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not every divergent view is a demon that you need to <laughs> pray for. Really, no, no. You might, even, you might even end up calling God a demon because, because moderator. That is what happened at the lake of Gennesaret when Jesus came walking on the water. To his disciples, he became a demon. Why? Because they, they, they didn't know anything about the possibility of this miracle worker of walking on that. Why? Because when Jesus performed miracles, they spent all the nights with Jesus in the hour of the miracles that he had performed. They didn't ask him serious questions. They never asked him serious questions. All they were jubilating, you know, you know what, Jesus, I also performed a miracle like you did. But but there were serious questions to ask this man. They never did that. So when he faced them and he came to them walking on water, they said, no, he's a demon. So sometimes Christians or believers call God a demon. <laughs> they call the revelation of God a demon, demonic. I, I, I engage scientists in these matters of, of God and origin, I engage them so much. I engage atheists in these matters of God. I don't look at them as demonic. Because I know God has something to teach me through an atheist. He has something to teach me through a scientist. Why? Because me and that scientist and that atheist, okay, found this world here. So we are just, we are, we are both observing this world. I shouldn't conclude that I know God. A scientist has nothing to tell me and to teach me about God. Then you don't know about revelation. Science has got way too much to teach you about God. Atheists have got way too much to teach you about your God. Pagans have way too much to teach you about your God. Moderator, has it, does anyone remember here me telling you that every degree at the university is a revelation of God? Mm. You remember mm. me saying that? Mm. Yes. It is, God is revealing himself. So please expose yourself to the revelation of God. Don't run away from it. And consume yourself into these cocoons. I am a Protestant. I am, I am, I am, I am a Catholic. I am an Anglican. I am, you know, I am, I am one of righteousness by faith. That is not all that God is about. Salvation is a part. Oh, actually, it is an act of God. But who is this God? Before we even come to the to the to what He does, He's a savior. My redeemer, my redeemer. Okay, 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 okay. Who is that redeemer of yours? Because redemption is what He does. But who is He? You need to respond to these questions. So expose yourself to the revelation 
of God because it is it is all over, gentlemen and ladies. It is everywhere. Stop restraining it into your doctrines. We have 27 fundamental beliefs. We have 100 beliefs. We have a dogma. Ah! God transcends our doctrines. God transcends our dogmas. God transcends our, 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 our philosophies. God transcends the theology. I have always told you here that the first lesson that you are taught in a theological class, in a sober theological class, is to remind you that you are not here to understand God. You are here. <laughs> you are here to, to, to learn about this God. And, and you, are going, you are not going to stop. Yes, because of the institution, we will give you a certificate. But that, certifi that certificate of theology is not a graduation in understanding God. You have not graduated in knowing God. You can't graduate until you die. You'll be discovering more and more and more. So do not limit yourself. But you find these people, now that I know how, how I am saved, let me even leave fellowship. I, have, I, I know some brothers who no longer attend fellowship. Why? Because they know how they are saved. They are saved by grace through faith alone. <laughs> and, and, then, and then they start assuming that just because they are right about salvation and others are wrong about salvation, that is all that matters. <laughs> that is not all that matters. Fellowship. We see you're preaching this guy's religion. That's what they call it. Yes, yes, yes. You have started another religion. Just because uh, uh, Mugoya has got it wrong on the role of the law and Serubide has got it right on the role of the law. That is not the entire God. <laughs> so, so Mugoya and Peter need help. So, so gentlemen and ladies, let us appreciate the revelation of God. Let us dive into these waters and let us continue sinking. I shudder to the fact that some of us have hit the bottom and we know God. <laughs> it is very unfortunate. But I wanted to say those, those few words about what Peter was saying. Very important, very important addition. And I think also Tom's question is partly related. Yeah, because it yeah. was about revelation. Revelation in his infancy. Can you necessarily call it right or wrong when it's in its yeah. infancy? When, when Tom listens to our first free, uh, audio about the worldview, he and he listens again, he will understand that we actually hinted on his his view, because Tom says that uh, if it is a worldview, why would it? Why would we tag conclusions of right and wrong on a worldview? And if it is a view. Is, and 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 uh, to respond to Tom, I'd like to tell him that yes, we mentioned that and said that uh, it is actually wrong, and that is why we said that uh, we discourage absolutism in discussing worldviews, and we encourage objectivity. That is what we encourage, and uh, objectivity has essentially nothing to do with what is right uh, and and what is wrong. For instance, objectivity means that uh, what you're saying makes sense. We can look at it in the in those lens. Meanwhile, <laughs> temporary conclusion. Yes, that's, that's because what you're saying, what you're saying, transcends your position and even covers other people's position. So everyone reasonable in in another world view should or ought to appreciate what you're stating, your claim. That, that is what we mean by objectivity. And how do we come to that? By first of all, making sure that every worldview qualifies with the four questions that frame a worldview. Uh -huh. We move from that stage and then we go to the four parameters. 
or tests of objectivity in each and every world view. So we don't come up with right and wrong. We, we don't come up with right and wrong. This is what it is we keep telling people that questioning to believe, believing to live. Why do we question even what we have concluded? We keep questioning because we know God is teaching us something new. We are growing in faith. We are growing in understanding God. We are growing day in and out. This is why we keep ha having these fellowships. We, we keep coming back here talking about the same things because we know by talking about these same things, new developments are going to occur. It is the same reason that we encourage people to always join us. And they tell us how, how they feel, what they think, what they have understood, what they have learned, what they have unlearned. Okay? You, you remember uh, uh, my sister back here uh, shared, I don't, know, I don't know whether I can recall particularly, but what she did, we made a presentation here. She went and did too much research on what we, we did here. And then she came back here and told us, guys, this is what is happening. And then we delved into that. She launched us into another world. And then we took our views there. Then recently, Brenda told us that uh, she's into ATR now, studying the goods. That is important. Why? Because she's she's investigating the world, the existing worldviews in contrast to her worldview. So, Tom, I agree with you. It is uh, not right. Let me use the same word to to establish what is right and what is wrong in these matters. However. Obje objectivity requires that we have uh, where a platform on which we're working upon. And that platform, unfortunately, in some areas it is called, it is, it is considered dogmatic, therefore right, <laughs> and other people's platforms are considered uh, wrong, <laughs> therefore things to avoid. But as, 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 as I discussed in the previous audio or presentation, uh, we need to overcome that, we need to overcome that. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. I think that was good. We have about 25 minutes. That's enough time for a question. Does anybody here have a question that we can attempt in these 25 minutes? Abby, do you have a question? You've not asked a question in a while. Ask one. Tafe Mukatonda has switched on his microphone. Oh, okay. Tafe Mukatonda, please. But uh, today, yeah, Jet has forgotten me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm here to to speak, please. Yes, I want to request that you you send me that 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 message I listened to, world views. I want to listen to it, and uh, I don't know today. Yes, the one that has formed the basis of the the previous discussion, the sermon. <laughs> I, I want to, to to listen to it and probably understand because uh, I think I have not understood. There's a write up we did, by the way. And, and I've, I've by not way. understood just by choice. <laughs> I've, I've, not, I've not understood by choice. I want to listen to it clearly and listen again. Uh, what, what is what is the it here? The the the, the salmon. The sun. Yes, the salmon. Yes, oh. the salmon. Sure. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the someone. Yeah, I want to listen to that someone, and then probably they tell my my brother Peter that uh, that you 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 cannot base your entire beliefs on uh, a, a trained theologian, because there are so many who are trained who have spent a lot of time in the Bible school but still don't understand God. So. It, it, will, it will have to take your effort. You need to be a very good student of the Bible to be able to benefit from a theologian. But if you just wait for a theologian to read for you and explain for you, the chances are that you, 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 you get doomed. Should you fall in the hands of a, a, a wrongly yeah, I don't uh, think that's what my brother Peter meant, though, but he'll defend himself. It's still here. Yeah, he, he's there. Yeah, he said it clearly that you need a theologian to understand the Bible. Yes, yes. Hello? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah he can be failing. I, 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 agree, I agree with Brother Mukwan on that, and I think I hinted on that. Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay, Peter, you want to respond to that one specifically? Then Brother Nicholas will continue. Yeah, I, with I, I, I said two things, that uh, to read the Bible, especially uh, for those who read it in English, the translation in English, you need qualifier, unable, teacher of English and communication. I said to read, and then I said to study the Bible, not to derive faith and so on, uh -uh, to study the Bible, not to read this time. You need unable qualifier, biblical, not theologian, uh -uh, biblical theologian, because not all theologians uh, think that the Bible is worthy. <laughs> so so you, you, you need at least an able one. Uh, now, matters of who is able and who is not, of course, th th those are subject to, to analysis. But my, my argument here is that uh, uh, Isaac Mukwana is my teacher of literature. When I'm, when I'm studying a work of literature, I usually, I usually consult that you know what my doctor here. I'm I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this. How? What do you think? You know what do you, what must I do here and there? You know, some somebody who is like a physician who takes a diagnosis of what you're reading. Uh, I'm, 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 my, my reference in Acts chapter eight. Oh, so man, every oh, so more we together. We got to target. We target. We want to. Mukamanga kuyambi, go munto ya able na kuyamba ko. Si kuisinzira ko yo, osaleo vyo kiliza nevi ota kiliza ne bino vyo soma, abi kuyambe ko kuwango ina watu kakati aizabi ya nyonyo dejo mu 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 service sincerely. Ngo munto ali chitegera di, nti katonde ya sabo mwana, si katonde ya sindi kendiga. So ebi ntu ungevyo. Nebyo nabyo. Bisa anga umu ntu ya soma. Ngate ya saba busabi na asiba. Nga ya soma. Obanga ya soma sebo okusoma. Hmm. Okay. I think I think that's that's clear. Petero. Um, Brother Nicholas, right. is that what you wanted to say? Or you hadn't wanted to add in to Yeah, that, that is it. Is it, eh? Okay. Your network has become like the one of Elohim. There is interference. <laughs> Why not Yahweh? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, it is about to become violent. It is in between there. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys 20 minutes any question i think we can attempt one if there's one if there's none of course we close and go and do other things you know how we do if there's ever be this is the time yeah, you say that we shall talk about among on thursday yes if she continues to make news, we shall talk about her on Thursday. But 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 Nicholas might have, you have a theological angle to, to uh, uh, <laughs> the theology of our monk. We have a theological question about a monk specifically, because we could attempt. No, I, I, I was just wondering why M7 who praised a monk or a one month ago. Is the one who has instituted the, an investigation into her dealings. You remember recently when she was launching her teaching hospital in Bukede, the president was full of praises. Mm. It, it, it is just a, 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 you know perturbing me that right now <laughs> she may be at the blink of a knife. It is teaching me something about life. I think it is uh, Jeremiah who tells us that uh, cast is a man who trusts in man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You 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 cannot you cannot trust man but, because. Uh, the, uh, hmm? Mukwana, Mukwana, for me, I want to share an experience. 
Yes, please. This year, uh, did, no, no, uh, since last year, mm. uh, to, to, to date, I, uh, I have been betrayed by almost everyone I call family. Now, I have, uh, because of this experience, I need to go back and study that verse that says that caste is uh, anyone who trusts man. And I would like to take this opportunity to, not to bias you, but to warn you. I don't know whether there is a difference, uh, uh, brother, brother Mukwana, <laughs> or, or whether the, the line is not too thin. I would like to warn you, not bias you, that be careful with uh, the people you call family. Therefore, you trust them because they are family. And be careful with uh, the people that uh, you love. Therefore, you trust them because you love them and they have told you that they love you. Um, I uh, just want to, to warn all of you that you don't need to get where I am. And today as I was coming back from work, I, I was thinking of uh, the most painful things in the world and on, on, on the list I have added betrayal. You people, this world has many painful things, but there is, I think, being betrayed by someone you trusted. <laughs> is, uh, it is something that you, ca you can't recover from. I am sorry to interrupt you, Brother Mukwana, but I wanted to share this experience. It is something that you can't recover from. Okay, maybe maybe that is me. I might not recover from this. So, and politics demonstrates it ably because if, <laughs> if, if it is true that... Uh, the president has summoned the, 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 the investigation of the speaker and uh, recently he was there endorsing her. Then, then really, you can now imagine yourself being hanged by your most trusted person that you have in life. Have you ever guys ever thought about that? Thank you, Mukwana, you can continue, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually, that is very, very helpful. It is something I'm also just thinking about. But you've, yeah, you've opened my eyes. Real betrayal is very painful and it's not easy to recover. In fact, even when you see somebody who claims to have recovered, it's more of a pretense, a cover up. Mm -hmm. But inside, dying. Mm -hmm. And politics does it better that once one is betrayed, either dies or separates permanently. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. With the politics in black and white. But now for us in this side of the region, we 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 pretend that well I forgave, I moved on, but the scar may not really be a healed scar. <laughs> it, it, it is a painful one. Uh well when um one of the things I've written my no first novel, which uh, Fountain Publishers has dragged on to publish, but okay. it's more it's more like a, a pain relieving novel. It's like a purgation of feelings, mm. because day after day I receive a, I've received calls from my auntie, mm. who stole from me. <laughs> she stole from me because my mom died when she, when I was very young and therefore she took charge and mm. took everything mm. absolutely everything and almost sending me to to the grave mm. but now that we've been without 
the, the riches my mother left behind have been able to try and make it in life and she needs my help. Can you imagine my mom died in 1991? Mm. So we could be talking of how many years? Mm. It was about um, one, two, three, about 30, <laughs> 33 years ago. Mm. But the pain, every mm. time I remember that, in fact, when I see her call, I'm like, hmm. But I talked to her, Nicholas, can you, we don't have rent, I don't have rent. <laughs> I'm like, but you're a thief. You, you, you deserve to, to, you deserve, you know, betray you, the truth is, as you've said, it's not easy to recover from it. Betray you is the worst thing that can ever happen to any thinking being. Mm. It is. I can I can I, I just wanted to prepare the people here who are listening in here that uh, prepare for betrayal because it might go with you. It, it, it might really take you. And it or if it doesn't take you, it will change you and you'll be a different person forever. And you'll be a different person forever. Betrayal is 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 bad. It's bad. And uh, most of us are a minute away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't scare my little brother, Peter. He easily gets scared. But, no, no, no. You, but you, uh, you, you don't know what it means, for instance. Let me, let, let, can, can we just share some examples, Mr. Moderator? Yeah, sure. There, 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 I, need, I need you guys to go and... Uh, and watch a movie, it's, uh, it's titled The Usual Suspects. Okay. Now, in that movie, there is a character is known as Kaiser Sozi. Now, that guy acts like he's crippled and uh, he's helpless, he can do nothing, but he's, uh, he's very, very dangerous. So deadly. But no one in his company, and people are being killed, but no one can even suspect him. <laughs> but the, the, his company suspects other people, but he's the killer. But in one of the scenes, he, be, the, there's a guy that he kills. But when you look, when before that guy was killed, he saw him and recognized him as the, the crippled guy among the group who couldn't do anything. He was actually even in most cases was helped out. But when you look at the eyes of this guy before he's killed, he died before he was killed. <laughs> yeah, true. First of all, the shock. Yes. The shock that of all people, <laughs> of all people, of, <laughs> that one just kills you. Like when you look at the eye, he died before he was killed. And one of the, the lines in that in that movie says that uh, the greatest, I think, I, I don't know whether, I, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just try to paraphrase, but you look for that movie, please, and watch it, and then come back and, and share your experiences. But one of the lines in that movie says, in that script, movie script says that the greatest strength of the devil is that he convinces the world that where, where he commits his crime, he's absent. Mm. The, world, the world is convinced that the devil is not here at his scene. Now, now I want you to imagine getting to know that all along, your most faithful wife or husband has been cheating. Did you hear the paradox? Yes. The, the most faithful spouse is a cheater. And out so of the and out of the four children, only one is yours biologically. And Kakati also gamba out of the four children, Gafata to Inomu, Ganaye, Waisai. 
or the only <laughs> the only child that you have is not yours biologically <laughs> and you said that child with the most ah. faithful spouse ah. Ah. and you spent all your medical insurance <laughs> everything you spent you spent your finances spent your time spent your resources now most importantly spent you are you are conscious and man even if you remarry even if you remarry if you, that man. one is not Never. easy gentlemen betray you is the devil himself so so i am not biasing you i am preparing you for betrayal because i don't want you to get where i am i am in a very very bad place that's a confession i had to make to you my brothers and sisters <laughs> but but i am here because i never prepared for it why because satan was not at his scene in my entire dealings with the people or oh, so you thought <laughs> <laughs> because most of us think that mm. the devil is not at his scene mm. Mm. gentlemen i would like to remind you that the devil is at his scene therefore your son will kill you just because he wants to take the house <laughs> let me pause there others also can share yeah you see you see msumba um <laughs> when among hosted the president yeah she knelt down and said you are the only person who understands me <laughs> <laughs> i remember that phrase in that romantic feminine voice that is a month ago today the person who understands her according to her confession is saying mm. what is that i don't understand igg have you done this intelligence have you done that they're investigating her left right and center my <laughs> <laughs> uh, bishop can't we say that you still understanding her no see singa <laughs> he, he understands her would have said they are ah, what you care and the dubai so oh, you don't to... understand but that doubt means does not understand her but again, but, but, again, okay, okay. Yeah, but a priest isaiah has brought it closer to us that no let us not look at our more than seven look at yourself and your relatives moderator save us from this man yeah. Surely, that man. Okay, uh, I was saying, moderator, I was saying that what uh, priest Isaiah has helped us to understand is that don't, uh, don't let us not just focus on uh, among and the president. Let us focus on ourselves. The betrayal may be closer than we ever thought. It is a thing because, because the devil is always at the scene. We don't expect him to be. <laughs> I'm downloading the movie I'll be watching it tonight. The Usual Suspects 1995. Is do by Kevin Spacey. Yes. Please do. Please do. So so yeah okay moderator moderator is back. Bob is saying the document you're referring to has been disowned by seven is press team. what Bob is saying. But I think it doesn't take away the bigger uh, point of betrayal in politics. 
Yes. The next one may not suffice, but it's still betrayal either way. And and yeah, yeah, and it, it could also be yeah, that he, she was the first betray. <laughs> the president probably the gave game gave game. her the, the the mandate because trusted her, and she betrayed the trust. Now the president is also betraying the trust, <laughs> so it is mm. a, a two edged sword. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, so we will probably discuss more about her on Thursday. But yes, betrayal is, is real and it is painful. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we have two minutes to go. We can't take another question. Abby has switched on a microphone. I don't know what she wants to say. Yeah, I, I want us to continue that betrayal thing some other time. Eh? Hey. Um, Please. Don't betray me. Don't betray me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good.